Welcome to the final video in my scripting series. So in this last video, we're going to talk about functions. We're going to talk about uh, what they are and how to use them. So functions are, let's just quickly take a look at a uh, script. Let's just load one up. So this is our script from the for loop video, the previous video. Let's just quickly blank this out. So print, for example, is a function, okay? You can tell a function because it's in blue and you have the name of the function and then a bracket, open and close, rounded brackets, uh, rounded, yeah, rounded brackets. Um, and then every line of your code needs to have a semicolon at the end that tells the script you know, this is a bit of code, and then this is a bit of code. This bit of code here is separate to this bit of code. If you didn't have the semicolon, it's going to think that this function is part of this function. So it's important to make sure every line of your code has a semicolon. Exception being ifs. So if then doesn't need a semicolon, else doesn't need a semicolon. The end does, because at that point you've then ended a whole structure of code. Same with while loops. While, true, do, then you have an end with a semicolon. Okay? For loops are the same. For, dollar something, in, group, or whatever, do, and then you have an end. Okay? So, semicolons are really important. But generally, every single line should have a semicolon. So, uh, functions, yes. So, these are the inbuilt ones here. And I will be covering each of these in a series coming soon. But for now, that's, that's those listed there. But what we're going to talk about in this video is creating your own. And also, on the topic of this, we're going to talk about return. Annoyingly, it doesn't have any example documentation, so it's left me to explain uh, the concept of return and how it works. So, uh, yay. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about custom functions first, because return is something that's typically used with uh, functions, specific and certainly custom functions. So custom functions are found here under the game configuration tab. They're listed under global functions. So when you open this uh, panel, look for the global functions tab, and this is where you can write your custom functions. You can, of course, also write them inside of scripts as well. But, you know, if it's a function that you're going to be referencing an awful lot, then it's typically a good idea to declare it as a global function, and then, and then all your scripts can just refer to that function by name rather than having to type it all out. So functions are really useful for, they are a bit advanced. They're not something that uh, I imagine a lot of beginners are going to, you know, be using for a little while, but they, they are definitely very handy the more into scripting you get, because essentially what they allow you to do is to um, create a set of code that your game does an awful lot of frequently and so instead of having to rewrite it all the time you can just have give it a name it's a bit like a variable like how you give data a name you can give a whole series of scripted commands a name and then you just have to call that name and it will do all of those things that's essentially essentially what a custom function does to give you an example one way that I use custom functions is I use it while I'm developing a game. I don't typically, these are not functions you would put in your game, but these are functions that I use while I'm uh, messing around with code. I'll give you a quick example. So you declare a function by typing the word function because it then tells the code that the next thing that's going to come next is the name of a custom function. So I'm going to call this dm. And then functions have to open and close parentheses. And then the next thing you type is begin. And then that says begin this function. And then just like while loops and ifs and 
for loops, they end with, an, with the word end and a semicolon. Okay? And then everything in between is your function, what your function does. So, optionally, what you could also do with um, functions, and we're going to do that, we're going to do this in this case, is we can pass in optional parameters. In this case, the parameter I'm going to create is a variable called string one. That's what I'm going to call it. Okay. So what's this? What this function is going to do is it's actually just going to run a single command. It's going to display message, and it's going to display message string one. Okay. That's what this function does. So if I just validate that and I press OK. Okay. Now. Let me show you what that essentially does. If I go into the game, let's cancel this script. And bring down the console. So we have a function called DM and it pass and I pass in um dollar string one. So you're probably thinking to yourself, what's dollar string one? Where does that come from? Well, it's, it's used when I actually type the function. So this is not me creating the function. This is now me calling the function. So I've just typed in DM, which is my function name. And now I'm going to pass in the parameter of, of the string I want. So I'm going to open the string and close the string. And then within the string, I'm going to type some text. So this is my function. And this text is going to become dollar string one because the function when we created it we said what this function should do is store the optional parameter in a local variable called string one what this function then does when i run it is it's going to display message and then that variable so in this case the result is i get my display message this is my function so you're probably thinking why, why did you create that function? It's just a nice shorthand. It means I don't have to keep typing display underscore message followed by open and close brackets followed by open and closing speech marks just to type something. I can now just type DM hello. In, the, in a fraction of the time, I can get the same result because at the end of the day, my function is still going to run display message, but I don't have to type display message. And bear in mind, a function could do other things as well. I could have DM, oops, I could have DM not just run display message, but it could also, um, well, do anything really. Mm -hmm. Add an effect, play an effect, an animation, whatever. Anything, any, any valid scripting command can be put into a function. So going back to global functions, we could just add that underneath that we should also set entity model for example we could set players model to sarah for example and every time we run this function not only is it going to display the message we type but it's also going to set the model to sarah it's a bit of a silly example but you can you see that you can do multiple things inside a function okay so let's uh, explain how return works. So let's go back to our global functions and let's make another one in function as, and we'll open and close parentheses again, begin, end. So that's our function created. But this time we're going to pass in two parameters, none one, run two okay so what this function is going to do is it's going to create a new variable within the function called total and it's going to equal num1 plus num2 and then what we'll do is we'll type return which is our keyword return it goes red because it's a valid uh, bit of code return dollar total so there's our function. So what does return do? What it does is it basically tells the function that it can return 
uh, a piece of information back to the scripts that called for that function. So whereas this is a sort of passive function, it just does one thing and then it, and once it's done, it finishes. This one is going to do something and then it's going to return back to the calling script. Um, the result. So for example, just to show you this in practical terms, we've got these two functions here. Let me show you the difference between the two. So validate that just to confirm it. So if we had a script, let's delete this printer console. Let's say we want this script one to do both of our custom functions. So this is how you would lay them out. So the first one would just quite simply be dn and then this is my custom text display message function. And that's fine. That's all that our function, that our first function has to do. It just takes the string that we pass in and it will display that as a display message. Okay. However, to make use of our add function, what we need to do is we need to call it and store it in a variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type dollar um, sum, let's say, equals add open and close brackets and let's say um, 50, 50. Okay, so the result should be 100. Okay, that's our first uh, line. But that, in essence, isn't going to display anything. It's just going to store the result in dollar sum. So then what we can do is we can combine it because we can then say dm, we can use our first function, but to display sum. Okay, so what's basically happening with this function is let, let's see if I can get it up on the screen at the same time. There you go. So what we're saying here is dollar sum, this local variable inside this script, inside script one, is should equal the result of this function. And what this function is going to do is it's going to add, because that's the name of the function, add. It's oh by the way, I just noticed one thing to note with global functions, this panel here is when you close it, it automatically reorganizes the functions by alphabet. It's not ideal. Hopefully that will be changed at some point, but um, just be mindful of that. And I'll, talk, I'll tell you in a minute why that's, a, why that's something to be uh, aware of and, and be mindful of. But let's just quickly get back to explaining this. So dollar sum equals the result of this function. And what this function does is it's going to run add and I'm passing in these two parameters. So dollar num one is going to equal 50 and dollar num two is going to also, also equal 50. Okay. Then what the function is going to do when it's run is it's going to create a, ver a local variable called total and that's going to equal 50 plus 50 because that's what these uh, variables contain. So total is now going to equal 50 plus 50. So it's going to equal 100. And then it's going to return dollar total back to the thing that called it. So in other words, dollar sum is now going to equal dollar total. So it's the equivalent of basically saying dollar sum should equal dollar total. Okay. But because dollar total is a local variable that's not inside this script, you obviously can't just type that because it's not going to know what dollar total is. But the function can return that data into the local variable that is local to this script. So this script has a local variable called dollar sum, which calls the function and then has the data inside a local variable in this function get stored inside the calling local variable of this script, if that makes sense. So, and then that uh, can then be displayed and we can use our first function to do that as well. So we can then DM the sum. So let's quickly run this code and check we get both of our functions working properly. So if we execute script one, first we get our, oh, this is my custom text display message function. And then as soon as I click this, we should get another display message that says a hundred. And there we go. Cause that's our 50 plus 50 
sent back to the dollar sum, and then this display message displays dollar sum. Okay. So, uh, to put this in uh, another context, if we take a look at um, request coordinate, here's a, another example function, right? So let's go through this now that we can understand functions a bit. Let's just copy that and let's put this into a script. Let's go to script one, for example, and we'll put this. Functions are typically declared at the top of your scripts because, uh, again, scripts are executed top down. So if you were ever going to call this, if you call this before you actually declare it, it's going to throw an error because it doesn't know what it is. For example, if I, let's, uh, let's just try compiling that. Um, oh yes, it's because I need to pass in something, I think. Let me, um, let me just pass, let me see if I can pass in something for a second. Zero, zero, zero. Does that work? Okay, that worked. Okay, so this would be a situation where it, where it works fine because we are calling it after it's been declared. If I was to swap these round, so I'm calling it before I've declared what it is. If I now try and save that, all of a sudden it gives us this error. Variable names must begin with a dollar sign. Now, what it actually is saying is this doesn't exist. The, the engine doesn't recognize this function, this uh, function name. And that's because when we declare it, we haven't, when we're calling for it, we haven't, we're calling for something we haven't created yet. And then we're creating it afterwards. So it's always a good idea, as I say, when you're using functions within your scripts, they go at the top. So then later on in your script, when you call it, it will know what it is. Let's take a look at the request coordinates function now that we've been talking about creating functions so you can sort of see how return works. So basically what this is doing is it's a function that validates coordinates that are passed in and dollar selected would be the coordinates. So it's very much like the data that's coming in being stored inside a local variable inside this function. So then what, what it does, it checks the tile at the X, Y, and Z of those coordinates. And then if it's not equal to null, so in other words, if a tile exists at that coordinate, then return false. Return false basically means don't return anything. Just return basically uh, stop, you know. Return also stops uh, the function as well, very much like break. It will stop doing the rest of this, okay? The moment, the moment this is null, or not null, sorry, the moment this if, uh, is valid, in other words, it's true, then return false will stop the rest of this from doing their thing, okay? If that's not the case, if it's not null, sorry, if it, get, get me a if the tile is uh, null, so there's no tile there, then it then creates a local variable that has a series of uh, coordinates in it, which is an array, and then it returns uh, those coordinates um, if the coordinate you've typed in or entered in this case is within those valid coordinates. So if, if you've typed in into the here one of these three coordinates, then return those coordinates uh, as data back into dollar result. Yeah. So that's what that's essentially what it's doing is it's, this will then contain, valid coordinates if the coordinates you've entered are not null uh, or are null, sorry, keep getting that wrong, and are one of these three. 
Okay, that's your that's the the standard default validate coordinate function for the request coordinate thing. I go into this particular function in much more detail when I cover request coordinate in my tutorial series. But I just wanted to bring it up again just to as we're explaining how functions work, just to sort of talk about return and how it's being used in this uh, case. So anyway, I hope that that's uh, been somewhat informative. Another thing to know about global functions is where they are stored. Okay, so if you click the open folder location, functions are basically stored inside the functions folder in your main project folder. So here's my the lift project and inside there alongside characters and images, maps, music, objects, scripts, that sort of thing will be a fun, uh, functions folder and each of these functions so I've got two here add and dm will be a dot function file inside your functions folder so that's actually how they are stored so one thing to know is you can't actually delete these I, if I was to delete them and then say ok it won't allow me to do that because I have to validate that I've deleted them. So if you want to know how to erase global functions properly then what you have to do is they have to remain in there so we'll just quickly validate and say OK. What you can do is you can uh, what's the quickest way to do this? Open folder location we'll go back just go to your functions folder and just delete the functions and then the next time you open your project go to game configuration it'll be clear okay so that's how you delete global functions just delete the actual dot function file from your functions folder okay anyway so that brings us to the end of my series on scripting Hopefully you found this informative and entertaining and you've stuck with it. So uh, hopefully you're now ready to get started with scripting and are well, well prepared. So with that said, thanks for watching these series of videos. If you have any questions with anything I've covered in this series, feel free to ask on the Discord. But for now, I will end this series here and stay tuned for more tutorials.